Over the past three years, I've transitioned from struggling to find a single profitable trading strategy to having an overwhelming number of strategies that my equity cannot handle. If you're interested in knowing how I achieved this, let's jump into my four-step framework from turning an idea into a profitable strategy. This is Systematic Trading 101, and I'm Unbiased Trading. The first step is idea classification. This is the first step in the framework that involves classifying the strategy ideas into different buckets. Each bucket represents a specific category of trading strategies, and it's important to understand the unique pros and cons associated with each category. Here are the four buckets. So we have momentum trading. This is strategies that capitalize on the strength and persistence of price movements. We have trend-based. These are strategies that aim to identify and ride long-term trends in the market. We have mean reversions. These are strategies that take advantage of the tendency of prices to revert to the mean or the average value. And we have pattern-based. These are strategies that rely on the identification and exploitation of recurring patterns in price charts. Now, we need to actually identify the core issues with each of these. Um, this will help you more than really the pros and cons, as when I've been trading all these kind of different types of strategies, I've always noticed it's simply picking your battle of what one you think you can overcome the, the best. So let's jump into the four kind of key core issues. Now, identifying the core issues with each trading style is crucial. For momentum trading, the challenge is to recognize whether the momentum is strong enough to continue or will it reverse soon. Next is trend-based, and the core issue is identifying when a trend is no longer happening and you are now in a chop without being super late on identifying and joining the trend with these new uh, parameters to identify when there is chop. We have mean reversion, and this is the exact opposite uh, issue of trend. We actually want to identify when there is a trend and when reverting to the mean will no longer likely happen as, as we're in a very strong trend. And this will normally be a huge um, profit loss for most mean reversion strategies if you can't identify uh, a way to sift out trend-based uh, price movement. Lastly, with pattern-based, the main struggle here is to identify when and how that pattern variates over time and ide identifying it quick enough as most of the time, these patterns will slightly change over time uh, and they'll cause your current version of that pattern strategy to no longer work or be less effective or potentially maybe be a losing strategy now. And it's uh, having the ability to quickly identify what has changed uh, and also not overfitting it to small changes. And that's really the key issue with those. Now, quantification, this is step two. Mere statements like, I'll take an entry when it shows weakness over the pre-market high are not sufficient for actually successful backtesting. To, to ensure the viability of a strategy, it's crucial to develop a logical framework behind the idea. For example, a quantified version of the previous statement could be, I would enter a trade if there is a three minute red candle above the pre-market high after it first touches it. So here's a little tip as well. I picked this up along the way and when you're developing your trading strategies, try to think how you would code it. And if you're not there with experience with coding, maybe just break it down into actionable steps that make logical sense. From identifying your entry points to assessing the risk to determining your exit strategy, every step should be grounded in data and have a clear understanding of why you are doing this. That is really the key to being fully systematic and making the most of your trading efforts if you want to be 100% systematic. Obviously, this will allow you uh, to have a variance of that. So you could have 80% systematic, 20% discretion, but still you want the core or how I say it is the macro edge. You want the macro edge of your strategy to be extremely quantified where you understand why each single part is happening. So if it was an open and close strategy, that's very simple. You're, you're saying that you have these parameters that you are looking for in a pre-market gap, for example, and then you're taking a position at open with a 20% stop. That's a very easy and clear step uh, walkthrough. But for other strategies, that's going to become more complex. Uh, but really, this quantification will allow you to do the next step, which is backtesting. The next step is subject to the strategy to rigorous backtesting. Backtesting can be divided into three key steps. So one, we have pull historical data. We want to gather all the relevant historical market data, including price and volume information, uh, or any other data points that would be relevant to your particular strategy. Two is running historical entries and exits. So you want to implement the quantified strategy rules on historical data to generate a series of simulated trades over that particular time period, so let's say five years. Three, we want to analyze the results. So you want to evaluate the performance of the strategy by examining various metrics such as profitability, risk-adjusted returns, drawdowns, and other relevant statistics. 
While the concept of backtesting can really seem very simple on the overview level, uh, it's advisable to dive a lot deeper into each of these singular topics in backtesting as there's a lot to learn there. Uh, you may even consider joining the How to Backtest Bootcamp, which covers these topics extensively with over around like 15 hours of content going into backtesting and also the next step, which we'll talk about in just a second. Now, if you're looking to pull data, I'd recommend checking out Polygon, uh, Polygon API, FMP or Alpaca if you know how to code. Um, and for running historical entries and exits, it's usually best to make this fully custom in Python. Uh, but there are a couple Python libraries that can help you, like FFN and backtesting.py, that can help you build some of this framework uh, without any needing to fully custom code it. But it is important to be cautious when running your Python code, especially if you're not too experienced. Even se seasoned coders like myself and other amazing quant traders I've had the pleasure to talk to and work with uh, have mistakes in the code. It's very normal. And these mistakes can sometimes lead to look ahead biases or other niche errors that produce insane results, but they're actually unrealistic or they're not true results over that time period. To avoid this, just make sure to double check your code and include realistic parameters like commissions and slippage, and also do a general analysis of your equity curve. Um, most of the time you can tell just by looking at equity curve, the amount of drawdowns, if there is potentially an error here, or you should potentially be looking into your code just in case there is one. Next step is robustness testing. Now, many traders make the mistake of stopping at the backtesting stage, assuming that if a strategy performs well historically, it will continue to do so in the future. However, live trading can expose flaws and unprofitable aspects that were not evident during a backtest. To address this, I recommend conducting robustness testing through the following tasks. One, we have Monte Carlo simulations. So these employ uh, and generate multiple variations of the strategy by randomizing different factors. So you have reshuffling and resampling and a couple others. Uh, this helps the assess the strategy's performance under different market conditions and various inputs uh, to allow you to see the robustness of it. Two is out of sample testing. So this reserves a portion of the historical data for validation or optimization purposes ensuring that the strategy's performance is consistent with unseen market data, which would be your other section of data. This, help, this step helps confirm the strategy's ability to generalize beyond the specific historical data used for the backtesting or optimization. And lastly, we, we have parameter sensitivity. So this analyzes the sensitivity of the strategy's performance to changes in its parameter or inputs. By systematically varying these parameters, you can identify optimal values that maximize the strategy's robustness and also where um, it's crucial that if you, it's better with an example. So let's say um, your current parameter is you're, you're shorting everything that's above a 50% gap. Well, how are the results when it's 49%? How is it when it's 48%? How is it when it's 46? How is it when it's 36? Uh, and when does the performance start to significantly drop off? Not like 5% or something, but you know, almost turn negative or go break even. Uh, when is that kind of point? So you can be aware of how uh, sensitive your strategy is to those minute changes. Um, gap isn't always the best one. Normally this is commonly done with like EMA strategies and other ones like that, but you can apply it to those kind of variables as well. Now, by following this four step framework, you can streamline the strategy development process. You can filter out ineffective strategies and focus on those that demonstrate true profitability and robustness. Remember systematic trading requires a disciplined and methodical approach and continuous refinement is essential to keep adapting to market conditions and your strategies changes. 97% of traders don't know how to effectively complete all these parts to identify and create robustness, robust systematic strategies. If you want to transform your discretion into black and white stats, I encourage you to join the July 1st How to Backtest Bootcamp, and there'll be a link in the description for a free video where it tells you a bit more information about it and you can go through it um, and just have some free value even if you decide not to join. Now, thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed it, please like and share it with anyone else who might be interested.